How y'all doing? Doing good? Welcome to news. Jurassic World Dominion news. Because we have had a lot come out recently. Right above me, Jurassic World Dominion Empire edition. Well, you know, Empire's a magazine. Um, they cover a lot of different things. In this case, they're doing Jurassic World Dominion. So there's like a huge spread inside uh, behind the scenes. I mean, a lot of things have been speculated to happen in Jurassic World Dominion have now been shown to... to lit yeah, that, that, that's what's happening. Um, so we'll get on to our next image. So here we go. Here we can see the Dilophosaurus. We've got it being sculpted above us there. Very reminiscent of... Um, what is it? Uh, Jurassic Park. If anyone had one of those making of uh, books, it would show you, you know, them sculpting the Dilophosaurus. And apparently, according to Chris on Twitter, who's a part of the Jurassic Outpost, which are basically working with Universal now. It was always kind of a meme. It's like, oh, well, they know the stuff. It, no, they do work with Universal. And he said that the original animatronics and sculpts still exist somewhere. Um, but Universal's misplaced them. So they had to make all all the stuff that you see in Jurassic World Dominion, they've had to make from scratch. They've never, or at least that's what I'm aware of anyway. So this is a fully sculpted Dilophosaur. And then over further that way, uh, you've got uh, this guy. The uh, the fully made Dilophosaurus. Oh God, no, we've got to put that back. The fully, fully made Dilophosaurus. Yes, look at it there. It actually doesn't look too bad here. We've seen it like in the, the trailer where it sort of opens its frill from like front on. Didn't look good. That was not a good. That was not a flattering shot. I don't know whose decision it was. Record the Dilophosaurus from that angle. That was not good. Old movie good had animatronics. Make good movie. Uh -huh. <laughs> no. Sometimes animatronics can look really cheap and and tacky. Uh, as, as you saw, this was the Dilophosaurus. They poured loads of love in, but you get it from that wrong angle, and it doesn't look good. And that's what that head shot was. It just did not look good. Um, so hopefully we can get some better shots. Here we go, some more maquettes. We actually have Beta being an animatronic. As you can see, I think down, if you look at the bottom, you've got an arm still to be made there. Now, I don't know as to whether this is, you know, an actual animatronic or whether they're just painting it and sculpting it. So I couldn't tell you by looking at this whether this is to be used as an animatronic or whether it's, you know, a, a replica. They, they often do this. Um, when it comes to actors and things, they'll have their face casts and things like that. Um, they, I assume they do the same with dinosaurs. Uh, but a big takeaway here is at the very top right, we have a, a Protoceratus, I think it is. Microceratus does look nice. Yeah, I thought it was. Microceratus. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, thank you. Uh, and then we got a lovely rendered shot of the of blue and beta. Whether this is a slip up or it's it might not be the case at all, uh, they have revealed its gender, um, and I have it right now. This is the Jurassic World Dominion Kaplan. It says it features a special beta raptor um, with her own rules. So, I mean, I'm assuming that means that betas are female. I, I mean, I, I, is blue female? May I don't know. But the reproduction's a bit iffy when it comes to Jurassic World and Jurassic Park, isn't it? They could easily uh, explain... Uh, beta away by some sort of genetic modification that they didn't ex see coming, that they would be able to reproduce asexually or some other sort of reproduction that I am not qualified to talk about at all. <laughs> uh, some with cells dividing, mitosis, I don't know. Uh, so maybe it could be something like that. Um, so we'll move on to the next one. Uh, this is a lovely shot. You've got a uh, baby Nozutoceratops, uh, Laura Dern, and uh, Sam Neill, or Ellie Sattler and Dr. Alan Grant. And you'll notice the woman uh, up there has on her shoulder, <laughs> this one, fish and wildlife, animal fish and wildlife protection thing from Jurassic World Evolution 2. So, I mean, this screenshot looks like it could have been taken out of the game. Um, this is obviously taking place uh, after she manages to persuade Alan Grant to come along with her. In the story of Jurassic World Dominion, we're looking at the good guys here. These are the people, you know, they're trying to track down Rexy. They're going to give them a sanctuary, maybe not a sanctuary island like they thought of in Fallen Kingdom, but a sanctuary nonetheless on a mainland, on a on a, a, a giant plot of land, I'm assuming. And you kind of saw that in Jurassic World Evolution 2's plot. There was a little bit going on there. And as you can see in the background, to her left, you've got a Parasaurolophus just up there. You've got another para 
uh, off shot here. And all the way, not that I can reach because I think, oh, I get killed. There's a Stegosaur uh, by the shoulder of Alan Grant as well. It's a Nozutoceratops. Oh, I got screen. It's a, it's a animatronic, I think. Nozutoceratops, which if we go back to this shot, is right here. It's beautiful. <laughs> Ramsey Cole, that's his name. Uh, and you got Kayla Watts is the flyer, the pilot, I should say. So Ramsey and Kayla. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Right, so this is the first time. I think he's supposed to be a scientist. Um, so this is our first shot that we see of him. And he seems to be getting out of the, the helicopter that's got the side turbines, which I think is where we see Alan Grant looking out of and he sees the the biosyn facility and this helicopter actually has biosyn plastered on the side of it interesting shot though i don't think we've seen him like just as a picture of him without any other like cast members being in the shot um and then this this is beautiful this is another um animatronic or you know the sort of sculpt for the animatronic first but it just shows that they're, they're putting in a lot of work so this is one of the new shots from the empire magazine um, which shows Alan Grant, Maisie, and Owen Grady. I had to stop myself there. I was like, is, he actually, is this character actually called Chris Pratt? Uh, so yeah, what's interesting about this shot here is that you have Maisie doing the classic <laughs> surfboard technique. But you also have friggin' Alan Grant doing it as well. <laughs> He's doing this. And the only one that isn't doing it is friggin' Chris. But if you look at that eye line, they're sort of looking at a dinosaur that's about their height. So I'm thinking either Velociraptor, Dilophosaurus, Atrociraptor. If you're doing this, this is universal language now for raptor. There's a raptor there. Calm down. Interesting to note that even Alan Grant's doing it. So whether him and Owen Grady had like a, a little back and forth, talked about raptors and search or what have you. Um, or maybe Alan Grant knows of Owen Grady and he's just doing this out of like a... Because remember, Alan Grant was the one who used to know about dinosaurs. He's one that T-Rex's vision is based on movement and about the raptors that attack from the side. So interesting to see like, you know, old way and new way sort of uh, mashup. Uh, so yes, here we go. So now we're starting to get into territory that's a bit like... I mean, these are all being taken on shelves, basically. You, you, can, you can buy these in America. Or how dinosaurs got to Malta. Or at least this sort of underground thing that's going on. And next is a shot from the uh, Empire magazine, which shows uh, Dr. Wu looking at a locust. Uh, there was a lot of speculation as to that shot in the um, trailer where it had loads of locusts flying around. We were like, how did, how, what could this have to do? Dinosaurs and such. Maybe it's completely unrelated. But it, it appears that actually Henry Wu is working with windows, apparently, because that's the <laughs> little window we're going to go above it. With biosyn, I'm assuming. And if we, the shot I've included at the far right. So in the prologue, it showed that we had loads of uh, dinosaurs uh, Dreadnoughtus was there, or Mementus, or whatever it was. Uh, Giga was there, Rexy was there, Zootoceratops was there, uh, Quetzalcoatlus was there. My thinking is that this was all one fossil deposit. A bit like the Morrison Formation or Hell's Creek uh, in, you know, real life. That Biosyn managed to find all these dinosaurs uh, DNA in a similar place. The only thing that they were missing was Rexy because Rexy was stolen by InGen or something like that. Uh, and these locusts were a thing, apparently. And it, it does appear like Biosyn. I mean, every time we see them, it's very clean, chemically, you know, clinical. It's, it's never, like, nice and warm. It's cold colors, it's white, it's sterile, it's un friendly, uninviting sort of thing. It does feel like they're the bad guys here. Uh, I don't know what the twist is going to be to reveal them. I feel like maybe we're going to try to work with them a little bit and then they... Ha! Plot twist! We're the bad guys. Uh, so we'll move on to our next one. So here we go. More Empire magazine shots. Uh, this is... I, I feel like... Is it a bit too much to have shown? We now know why Owen Grady and Claire Deering are in Malta. And that's because somebody at the uh, Fallen Kingdom auctions managed to get a Bionix and an Allosaur and has now altered their genes to make basically illegal cockfighting. Now, if we have a look closely at the people and the sizes, I think people have said these could be babies. Um, and I think that's probably the most likely 
uh, scenario that's going to come from this. However, I get the feeling that these are modified dinosaurs, like dwarf. Dwarf dinosaurs. Because, th I mean... I don't think Biosyn is the only company out there, you know, that are doing this. It could be a case of Biosyn are actually promoting this and they're the ones selling these things to them, to these illegal underground black market battle things. I mean, you can see the Byronix is chained up, the Allosaurs chained up. And what's interesting, because if you look closely at the Baryonyx here, you'll notice it has a robotic arm. It's, it's missing a something by its elbow joint. And if it wasn't for... Uh, other things that have been shown around the internet. I wouldn't have looked at this image twice. However, because they could have had this shot, they could have had a Baryonyx and an Allosaur fight each other in this illegal fighting ring. How about we upscale it a little bit more? How about we give the Baryonyx a robotic arm? It looks like it's been in, in it definitely has been, in battles before. And this has been an ongoing thing. And it's not just the first time that this has happened. Uh, showing that really... Ooh, these things need saving or else they're gonna be you know uh, they're gonna live this life of torture basically so who's making prosthetic limbs for dinosaurs i mean maybe it's a very good baronix maybe it's won a lot of money from these bets maybe you know a bit like a horse racing or something you know so you'd want to look after it you want to give it all the advantages you can uh very odd um but it does like i say Give us a reason to bring our main characters to this location to stop this from happening. And you've got the Atrociraptor in a cage. This is a big operation. Not only do we have this small little fight, but we've got it on a whole larger scale where we have Owen Grady going through uh, the streets. And then they're just being like a huge Carnotaurus and a, a, an Allosaur, like a bigger one, just roaming the streets. And it's, it's all sort of gone to heck now that this underground fighting has been rumbled this is from an upcoming kind of board game um so <laughs> yes there's a lot to go over so we have the biosyn forest which has a pararaptor instead of a dilophosaurus which is interesting um so i get the feeling that this biosyn forest is 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 the giant you know woodland that we've seen around the facility and that's going to be the finale you also have malta which is the dilophosaurus but it's velociraptor okay you also got the cracked ice which shows a dimetrodon and then the amber mine but what's interesting about this and why i wanted to show it yeah cyborg dinosaurs i like it yeah, <laughs> yeah it shows that the, the, there's gonna be definitely four locations we're gonna travel to we're probably gonna start in in the, uh, you know, with our main characters, then go off to the cracked ice area and then go follow Alan Grant and them in the Amber Mines and then go back to Chris Pratt and them in Malta. And then finally, everyone reconvenes in the Biosyn Forest, you know, where the f facility is and, and whatnot. What's interesting, and the reason why I've included this, is uh, by the Giga graphic that you can see at the side, um, it shows this tower and we, it's not the first time we've seen this. You can definitely tell it goes up and down. Hence the reason why you've got extra bit at the top. Whatever it is, a lot of things take place here. Hence the reason why we are showing Giga basically being here as well. Now we're going to talk about the rumble. We're going to talk about Giga and Rexy. This is it. It's all been leading to this. We've sh or we've been shown that they have had a battle in the past 65 million years ago. This is literally a a, a rematch 65 million years in the making. Forget Logan Paul. This is you know the granddaddy of grudge matches. Now we've had Jurassic World with nostalgia, but how about we give Rexy an arc, a character arc? That Rex we saw die was her original ancestor, um, and this Giga is another ancestor of that Giga that won. So going forward, even though Rexy is so old now, can Rexy actually manage to defeat the Giga? And I love this. I mean, it's not the best of quality of shots, and I think it's a sticker. It looks like it's a sticker. Um, but it looks so good. I love the rendering on this. This is beautiful. Um, but I think a lot of this now going forward is this. There's some really so good. I love it. Uh, we kind of saw this with Manticorp. Uh, in Camp Cretaceous, this camera, like, watching dinosaur battles. Really, what's happened? It could be true. When Jurassic World first came out, Colin, Colin Trevorrow was on interviews, and he he mentioned about watching somebody. I think he played Jurassic World Evolution. I've, I've got to find this clip. Uh, and he mentioned about watching videos of Jurassic World Evolution where somebody had pitted loads of dinosaurs fighting each other in a free-for-all. 
I watched a player who took all of the paddocks and put them in a giant circle mm -hmm. uh, with the doors facing in and open all the doors at once with all of your carnivores to be able to have this giant battle royale. Uh, and I did watch it. Now, I don't think it was my video he watched, but it's definitely planted something in his mind, 100%, to say like, okay, Let's have dinosaur battle. Let, let, let's go this route. This is how many views did that get on YouTube? Yeah, let's put that in me a triple A movie. <laughs> Another lovely shot of Rexy versus Giga with some very high quality uh, renders there. The biosyn facility has been destroyed. The the illegal uh, fighting and poachers have been uh, apprehended, and then this is it. Biosyn's final project, something to defeat the, the old classic in-gen rivalry there. You had Biosyn and in-gen. Basically what it is, right? Like Rexy v Giga. And it, it's uh, for the longest time, ever since Giga has been discovered, it has always been who would win. So we're settling a feud here from the playground in the cinema. But there is some lovely, beautiful shots that have came out. Um, this looks like almost a finished shot. It it we're in like a mangrove swampy area. And where else have we seen this? We saw this in the first trailer. We saw this with the Therizinosaurus. It might not be the last time we see that feathered fluffy butt. As you can see, Rexy actually has a scar on her nose, on her snoot. So you've got a cut on the Giga here. Hence the reason why Colin said it's like Joker, right? <laughs> so we've got some cut here, but we've also got some cuts on Rexy's face as well, showing that possibly they've already been in a fight. Or maybe the Therizinosaurus has got involved. Because uh, it looks very much like two slashes. And it could, you know, the Therizinosaurus have three claws. So it could very well be a cut there. And maybe the other one, the other claw would have missed. And it just went off to the side there. Whereas, you know, this Giga um, may have also been clipped. Because if we have a look at the renders beforehand, the Giga doesn't have that in any of these oh no that shot it does <gasps> oh it does have that ah interesting so yeah it does but do you really want, like imagine a spino comes out of nowhere and helps this <gasps> imagine if the spino helps kill giga oh like rexy's struggling and spino comes out of nowhere <laughs> please do it colin i know the movie's finished listen colin colin listen to me you listen bring spino Bring Spino back. This is the next. But it shows something that we've never really seen before. And that is the Mosasaur in, in a toy form. And, and the interesting thing about this is that it's been captured. Possible that it jumps out of the water and it attacks a, a Trociraptor. I'm assuming, judging by the Trociraptor being there, the, the kind of brickwork that's also there, it could be Malta. Maybe a po the poacher team got it. And now that they they rescue the Atrociraptors, they rescue the uh, the Mosasaur, they bring them all to the Biosyn facility. And that's where the, you know, the final conclusion happens. It, it's possible. We have the Giga. And the Giga slamming into, I don't know what that is, like a viewing station platform thing. Again, I'm assuming this is the finale of Dominion because you've got the Giga there. You've got the forest. It's definitely the Biosyn facility of some sort. And there's a raptor there. It doesn't look like Beta. It doesn't look like Blue. So maybe it's another Atrociraptor. <laughs> when, when Colin compared the Giga to the Joker, it was just like, why? It just wants to watch the world burn? What, Colin? Wasn't that Indominus Rex? You forgot? What about Indoraptor? That just wanted to kill things. Why Why is the Giga a dinosaur that isn't a hybrid? It's just selling tactic. That's, that's all it is. It's like a hype. Judging by her outfit, I'm expecting this to be at the end of the movie. She's, she's ragged. The hair's not done. Her clothes are dirty. And that's one way of say, like showing you how how much the character's been through in a way. Oh, you know what it is? Could you imagine? I'll tell you something. I'll tell you something. So people are like, oh, maybe maybe no main characters will die. Give me a second. Here we have three exclusive shots from the Empire magazine. Right above me, you've got all our main characters. You've got Kayla, Maisie, Claire, uh, Alan Grant, Laura Dern. Or like Samuel and Chris Pratt there. So it does appear at one point, these characters were driving around in a Jeep. Now, judging by the headlights, this looks like a Jeep, like a Jeep Rubicon or something like that. And because we know that Jurassic works very closely with Jeep now, it wouldn't surprise me. Hence the reason why we've got this image. 
because it's very similar to, you know, Jeep. That The advert that uh, Jeff Goldman did when he was driving a Jeep bike while being chased of a T-Rex. So it's definitely a Jeep, like the brand. Uh, Jeeps are indestructible, guys. They cannot be destroyed by anything, ever. <laughs> What's interesting about this is that we get this shot of, of, of Jeff Goldblum, like, driving the car. And then you get this one of the car being flipped over and destroyed. Are we saying that uh, Ian Malcolm's not a competent driver? Or maybe Giga just seemed to attack it. I don't know. I, I'll leave it up to you guys to discuss. But they're, they're in the safety of the Jeep. you got Laura Dern and Kayla there. Uh, or uh, Ellie Sattler. Um, but then they get out of the Jeep. They have a really close encounter of the Giga, I'm assuming. You see this bit right here? This. Ian Freeze sort of thing. Nice. Nah, that's definitely the brake light. But... What is he doing? Like, the, the kick is right there just looking at him. Imagine if they killed off Ian Malcolm. Could you imagine if in some heroic intervention, like in the first one, he was like, he was trying to, see, I don't know, he was being a bit of like a I'll be the hero sort of character. Oh, Alan Grant did it. I'll do it as well. You save the kids. And he ended up, of course, paying with almost his life for his ego. Um, but I think, I think not anymore. He's not that character anymore, but it would be just, I don't know. If there's gonna be one character that might die, maybe? I don't know. Also, you've got the dead locusts sort of falling with the fire here all over the place. I think there's one there on the car. It's this. And we also see in the trailer that Maisie is by ladders and she's like almost about to scale it. And then the T-Rex or the Giga comes in and crunches at the side. I'm assuming it's the Giga. So a lot happens in this, this shot. I mean, if you really want to know what's happening in the movie, you don't have to look far now. Um, we're just missing exactly how Giga dies. That's what we're missing here. Possibly this is a clue. Maybe the reason why we are seeing this tower so much is because that's how Giga dies. It's possible. I don't want to say this. I, if, if this becomes a thing, please. Oh my God, don't do Universal. You made it too obvious if you have. Um, don't tell me Giga gets pushed underneath this. Claire hits the button and crushes it. Don't tell me. Don't tell me that's what happens. Because they are really showcasing this. Could that be how it dies? It gets crushed? Like it goes all the way to the bottom and it just crushes the Giga? I sure hope not. <laughs> ah, this is what you said about the Triceratops though, remember? Remember that skull to skeleton with Indoraptor? Could you imagine if that's what happens? Like why show this in everything? This tower is part- look, like, look, look, two seconds, look, shut It's part of Kaplunk. This is the tower. Why would they show it everywhere in multiple games? It being right in the final shots of the- of the movie. Like, it's in the background right there. Oh, I have to cancel myself. It, no, it can't be. It'd be stupid. It'd be stupid. No. Nah. I mean, why put the Giga right in front of it? Like right there. Why would we do that? That would be stupid. That's like putting the, the Indoraptor in front of the Triceratops skeleton and being like, hmm. <laughs> Universal when watching this back. <laughs> Cancel him. Take him down. I mean, it was kind of obvious with the Lego set when that came out with Fallen Kingdom. And that's what led me to making that video. It was like, all Jurassic World deaths have been third parties, kind of. Yeah, Indominus Rex was killed by Moser. And Moser was like, ha, ah, surprise. Indoraptor was killed by Blue jumping on and going, ah, surprise, and then it died. So is Giga knocked down in underneath it, and then Claire goes, smile, you son of a, and it clicks the button, and then it goes, ee! and it goes, no, and it dies. Hey, do you want to know how I got these scars? The tower fell on me. Yeah, uh, thank you everyone for tuning in, and uh, until next time, I'll see you later. Bye-bye. <gasps>